Assalamu alaikum. So today we're going to do some calculus one general review. So this general review will be in two sets. Each set has at least three video. So I try to touch everything in calculus one. So at least those video will be helpful for uh, midterms and final. So let's start with the first question. Uh, the first question asks find the exact value of sine pi over 3 and 2 cosine pi over 3. So uh, here they ask for the exact value, so we don't need to use calculator here. So we need to know the uh, table value of sine and cosine. So if you don't memorize the table or if you don't have the table, so I will show you a short way how to get those value. So uh, we know that the basic the basic angle we use the most are 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3 and pi over 2. Those are the most common angle used. So here I will show you how to find out the value of sine and cosine. So for sine, so this is the value for sine, so I'm going to sign here and we do cosine below. Alright, so what you do here when you have uh, those angle star we, we, here we have zero the first one second one third one and the fourth one so I'm gonna start with zero one two three four then what I do next I take the square root of each one take the square root of each one y is 3x plus 2 and it's given to me already here so I don't need to look for y so what I do here I just apply the formula now here the formula for the distance is this so it's gonna be square root of I take x2 minus x1 so it's gonna be x minus 2 square 
plus y2 minus y1 so it's going to be 3x plus 2 minus 1 square now what is my function f of x f of x is the distance square is the square of the distance so what I do I just take the square of this square root which is going to give me square root of x minus 2 square plus 3x plus 2 minus 1 so which is plus 1 I don't need to keep this so square and I square this which means that the square root cancel out so my function will be x minus 2 square plus 3x plus 1 square so if I FOIL so I don't distribute the square because the common mistake a student do is x minus 2 square what they do they distribute the square keep in mind distribute the square only in two operation multiplication and division if I have x times 2 square I distribute because they have time x over 2 square I distribute because we have division addition subtraction we don't do that we don't we don't distribute the exponent please don't do that because most of the common mistake I see on the paper is this so please don't distribute so what you do you FOIL so when we have addition subtraction and we have exponent so what you do FOIL alright so here I'm gonna FOIL so I get x minus 2 square which is x squared minus 4x plus 4 the same thing here so plus 9x squared plus 6x plus 1 then I combine like terms so x squared x squared 6x minus 4x and so on so it is going to be 10x squared plus 2x plus 5 now how can I see this in order for me to make sure to find out a and b and c so what I do here I change fx which is ax squared plus bx plus c in this format so it's going to be a b c which here we have like uh, triple which has a b c and we start always from the highest power a x squared bx plus and c and same thing here I switch this to this notation 10 to 5 and this will give me what is my a b and c right away and this notation will be helpful for people who want to do computer science because this is the way we use polynomial computer science all right so my answer for a will be 10 so a is 10 b equal 2 and c equal 5 so I hope it's clear now let's do next question so here they ask me for the domain of this function so first thing I need to know what type of function I have this is rational function so numerator is a polynomial denominator is a polynomial so to find out the domain is the intersection of the domain of the numerator and the domain of the denominator but keep in mind that the denominator shouldn't be equal to zero so that's been this polynomial because we know that the polynomial has all real number as domain but here because it's on the denominator so we should exclude the value that make this denominator equal zero so if it can be everything except the value that make the denominator equal zero so what I do I'm gonna find out which number make the denominator equal zero so I make the denominator equal zero and I solve so either you factor or you solve using the square root so if I factor I will have x minus 3 because this is the difference of 2 square x plus 3 equals 0 so keep in mind this property so a plus b times a minus b is a square minus b square and the reverse work or you can do it this way so we do x square equal 9 and you take the square root so when you take the square root we will end up having x equal plus or minus square root of 9 which is plus or minus 3 so here we have two value which is I will get here so I make this one equal 0 and I make this one equal 0 
so in that case I will have x equal 3 and x equal minus 3 so as you see is the same thing so either you use uh, for this case either you solve using the square root or you factor and get the value by making each factor equal to 0 but if you have something different than, tha than, than that what you do is factor is better so now my domain is going to be everything excluding those two values so my domain will be minus infinite minus 3 union minus 3 3 union 3 to infinite so this will be my domain now they ask me to find out the vertical asymptote so we know that the vertical asymptote happen only if we have excluded value in the domain if we have excluded value in the domain we we may have vertical asymptote but before we check the vertical asymptote we need to simplify this but for that case we don't need to because we're going to apply the limit and if there's something to simplify we will simplify so what I do here I apply the limit on the x value here so I will have the limit x go to minus 3 of f of x but here you see the first one here is on the left side so it's going to be minus 3 minus then I'm going to apply the limit on the right side which is limit of f of x on minus 3 plus and so on so here is going to be the limit of 3x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 9 when x go to minus 3 minus so minus 3 minus mean what is minus 3.001 so when I make a square it becomes greater than 9 so when I substitute minus 3 minus here so it's going to give me 27 so 9 times 3 is 27 plus 1 over here it will be 9 plus why because 3.001 times 3.001 is something greater a little bit than 9 so this is what we're gonna have 9 plus so here I will have 28 over 0 plus which is infinite the same thing here so x minus 3 plus so minus 3 plus mean what is on the right side of minus 3 which mean that is 2.999999 it's minus 2.9999 so when I make a square it's going to be less than 9 so here I will have limit of 3x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 9 x go to minus 3 plus and here will be 27 plus 1 over and here will be 9 minus minus 9 so it's going to be 28 over 0, point 0 uh, minus, which is minus infinite. So we do the same thing for 3. I do the limit of f of x when x go to 3 minus. You see I'm going to do the left side of 3. The left side of 3 is 2.9999 so uh, I'm just giving you an approximation how you should see uh, 3 minus and 3 plus so here will be limit of 3x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 9 when x go to 3 minus so here it's going to be 9 minus because it's going to be less than 9 be 27 plus 1 over 9 minus minus 9 which is going to be 28 over 0 minus which is minus infinite here we already got the vertical asymptote at minus 3 and here we're going to get the vertical asymptote at 3 so we have limit of f of x when x go to 3 plus so it's the same thing as the limit of 3x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 9 x go to 3 plus again 3 plus is 3.001 so when you make a square it's going to be greater than 9 so it's going to be 9 plus 27 plus 1 over 9 plus minus 9 
so here's going to be 28 <coughs> 0 plus which is infinite so when the limit of a value when x go to a value and the limit go to the infinite this is mean vertical asymptote so my vertical asymptote here so my vertical asymptote are x equals 3 and x equal minus 3 so I have two vertical asymptotes now I'm going to do the question which is the ask for uh, horizontal asymptote so the horizontal asymptote always is rated with the x go to the infinite so to find out the horizontal asymptote we apply limit of the function when x go to infinite and minus infinite and see what we got so here's going to be the limit of 3x square plus 1 over x square plus or minus 9 when x go to infinite so when we deal with the infinite we always deal with the highest power of the numerator and denominator so it's the same thing if I have the limit of 3x square over x square so everything it's it's null it's cancel so uh, we just deal with the highest power so this is cancelled out so what's left is 3 so x y equal 3 it's as I'm taught at the infinite you see this is at the infinite is 3 let me see at the minus infinite what I will get so limit above x when x go to minus infinite is the same idea so it's going to be the limit of 3 x square plus 1 over x square minus 9 x go to minus infinite so again it's going to be the same thing as the limit of 3x square over x square when x go to minus infinite so it's going to be 3 so y equal 3 it's a horizontal asymptote on both sides so my horizontal asymptote is y equal 3 so this will be my horizontal asymptote for next question <coughs> Here they ask you to use the definition of the derivative to find out the f prime of f of x equal 1 over 3x. So here we know that the de definition of the derivative, so f prime of x is the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h when h go to 0. So I just need to apply this so I got my f prime of x equal the limit when h go to 0 of 1 over 3 times x plus h minus 1 over 3x the whole thing over h so I make the common denominator here so here will be the limit when h go to 0 of 3x minus 3 times x plus h over 3x times 3x plus h times because this is h over 1 so fraction over fraction you multiply by the reciprocal so it's going to be 1 over h now I distribute I combine like terms so I got limit when h go to 0 or 3x minus 3x minus 3h over 3x times 3x plus 3h times h because 1 times the top is just the same number so here I cancel out here so we end up having limit when h go to 0 of minus 3h over 3x times 3x plus 3h times h so I cancel this h cancel the 3 so what's left is the limit of minus 1 over x times 3x plus 3h when h go to 0 so when I substitute h here so we end up having minus 1 over x times 3x which is minus 1 over 3x square 
and this will be the derivative of this function. Next question. So here we have some set of limit. So we are trying to do. We're gonna try to do all of them. In the same page. So in that case, you will. I have an idea about the limit. So here, sine of 9x over x. So yeah, I'm going to use this property. Sine of ax over ax. So if the limit go to 0, so it's 1. But here I don't have a on the denominator. So what I need to do, I need to create that a. So what you do? So 9x over over x when x go to 0 so I multiply both sides by 9 so now I create my a on the denominator so this value is 1 so my final answer will be 1 times 9 which is 9 The same thing here, this is one of the property of the limit, so normally you should know that this is 0, but if you don't know this, so we will, I will show you how to use it. So for the midterms, so because we don't learn, we didn't learn yet uh, L'Hopital rules, so we need to use another method besides L'Hopital rules. So here, to find out the limit of this, we're going to multiply both sides by the conjugate of the numerator. So I will have the limit sine h minus 1 over h and I multiply both sides of that fraction by the conjugate of cosine h minus 1 which is cosine h plus 1 cosine h plus 1 so this is the same thing like I say if I have a minus b times a plus b we just did it on the first question, so it is a square minus b square. So here we end up having the limit when h go to zero of cosine square minus one over h time cosine of h plus one. So cosine squared minus 1 is minus this is h is minus sine square because we know that let me put it here down so I will erase it so we know that sine square plus cosine square is 1 so if I switch the order I will have cosine square minus 1 will be minus sine square so if I move this one here and I move that one here so this will be negative and this will be negative so in that case I will have cosine square minus 1 equal minus sine square so here I will have the limit of minus sine square of h over h times cosine of h plus 1 so here I need to have sine square over h square. So in that case, I don't have that case. What I do here, I multiply both sides by h. So this will give me 1. So when h go to 0, so I will have the limit of sine square h over h square times h over cosine h plus 1 when h go to 0. So this is 0 because if I square th uh, this one, sorry, <coughs> this will be 1 because if I square this, I will square the 1 which is going to give me again 1. So this is 1 because when h go to 0 is the same case here, when x go to 0. So this will be 1 and when I substitute 0 here, I will have 0 over cosine of 0 which is 1, 1 plus 1 which is 0 over 2 which is 0. So this is a way how to do it. But if you can notice this, 
there is a very very short way to do this if you can notice this this is the definition of the derivative of cosine at the point zero so you see is the same thing limit cosine of h minus 1 over h is the same thing as limit this is h 0 is the same thing as limit of cosine of 0 plus h minus cosine of 0 over h and this is the same thing as derivative of cosine at 0 so we know that derivative of cosine is negative sine so the derivative of cosine is negative sine so it's going to be negative sine of 0 which is 0 so if you can notice this so this can be done straight away so I just see this this is the definition of the derivative at the point 0 so I just need to do what this is just cosine prime of 0 which is minus sine of 0 which is 0 so this will take you like 2 seconds and it will be done but if you cannot notice this so this is the way you should do it using the conjugate of the numerator all right for the next question so let's do this question so here I just need to plug in first see what I will get so when I plug in here 4 I got 16 minus 24 plus 8 over 16 minus 16 so I will get 0 here over 0 so when we have 0 over 0 that means you can factor the numerator and you can factor the denominator so what you do here you factor the numerator and you factor the denominator so if you get struggle in factoring so as long as you have x equal 4 here so you already have one factor so because that 4 make this one equal 0 that means you already have one factor already so what do you do I set this limit as the following I put x minus 4 x minus 4 so I already have x minus 4 because when we have the value here of the limit I just need to minus with the x and I get the first factor do this only if you have both 0 on the numerator and denominator so subtract x with its limit value then I'm gonna find the other factor so I know that this is x square so how can I get x squared? I mean x by x so which means that this is gonna be x now it is about the sign here the sign is positive the, the last sign is positive that means those two have the same sign so that means this is minus and this is minus this is negative that means they are different sign so that means if this is negative this one should be positive now I'm done which number times 4 give me 8 is 2 and which number times 4 give me 16 is 4 and you're done so this one is the limit of x minus 2 over x plus 4 when x go to 4 this will be straightforward so it's going to be just 4 minus 2 which is 2 4 plus 4 which is 8 so it's going to be 1 fourth will be your limit here like I say on the the previous uh, question we just deal with the highest power when we when it's come to infinite so this is the same thing as the limit of 3x squared over 3x squared even if I have x here it's not gonna change anything so always deal with the highest power only for infinite plus or minus infinite only for infinite I'm clear so this is just one so the limit will be one next question so here this is a true or false question so if it's true prove the statement if it's false prove or provide the contraexample alright for the first question a continuous function is differentiable yes but there is a contraexample because there is some case which is not true so it can be continuous but not differentiable for example the absolute value function it's continuous but it's not differentiable why because we have an angle because when we when the function create an angle like this what happened here is the slope of 
the same point on the right side and left side are different so the slope on the right side is positive the slope on the left side is negative for the same value of x so this is why it's not differentiable so this is not true because if I choose a function f of x equal absolute value of x so at 0 we have two different derivatives so uh, when x is less than 0 f of x is minus x and f prime will be minus 1 and when x is greater or, greater or equal to 0 so f of x is just x and f prime is 1 as you see the left side and the right side derivative are not the same at 0 so this is why the first statement is false but if they are if they told you differentiable continuous yes because every differentiable function is continuous function all right for the second one so the following function is continuous at x equal 1 is it true or false I don't know so I need to apply definition of continuity what is the definition of continuity it must be defined and the right limit and the left limit are equal it must be defined that's mean it's on the domain if it's not on the domain I don't need to talk about continuity so it must be defined on the domain so this mean the X so like for example F is continuous at x equal a so a must be part of the domain of the function and f of a exists and is equal to the left limit and left limit and the right limit so the right limit and the left limit must be equal and is equal to the value of the function on that on that x so here let me check this is continuous because this is polynomial degree 1 so I just need to check what is f of 1 so f of 1 is 3 plus 1 which is 4 if I do the limit here I will do the limit on the right side so but I will I will get 4 because it's continuous on the right side because this is like I say is a polynomial degree 1 every polynomial is continuous you should know those so x go to 1 minus so it's going to be 3x plus 1 just substitute 1 so it's going to be 4 and as you see the left limit is equal to f of 1 let me check the right limit so limit when x go to 1 positive so it's going to be x squared plus x minus 2 over x squared x to the 4 minus x cubed so why didn't you use the first equations because the first function or the first expression is only for x less than 1 for x greater than 1 I have to use this so this is why this is called the piecewise function which is each part of the domain has its own function the domain less than 1 it has this function the domain greater than 1 has this function so I have to deal with the function based the domain I pick so here I pick the domain less than 1 so I'm going to use this function because this is where less than 1 now I'm dealing with the domain greater than 1 so I'm going to pick this function so here I substitute 1 if I substitute 1 I will get uh, 0 over 0 so which means I can factor the 1 here so here again I will do the same thing I did here I have a common factor straightforward here here again x go to 1 plus so here I will have x minus 1 so I'm going to minus uh, 1 with x and here I find out the second factor so here this is x x times x is x squared so this means this is x this is minus and this is minus that means this should be plus and which number of times uh, 1 give me 2 is 2 now I cancel this and substitute 1 so this is going to be 1 plus 2 over 1 which is 
3 3 is not equal to 4 so this is not continuous at 1 so f is not continuous at 1 why? because the left limit and the right limit are not the same and they are not equal to f of 1 only the right limit is uh, the left limit equal to f of 1 but the left limit is not for number c for number c is it the function continuous at x equals 17 already 17 is not part of the domain because if I make 17 minus x equals 0 I will have x equals 17 that means 17 is not on the domain so when 17 is not on the domain I don't need to talk about continuity at all we don't talk about continuity. That means the most easiest way to check continuity first check if the value is on the domain. If it's not, forget it. Don't talk about the continuity at all. So, not continuous. So this is false. Oh, this is not continuous. Not. Okay, this is not continuous. So it looks like they give us all for statement. All right, next question. Yeah, they ask me to find the derivative of those function. So here we have uh, exponential function, and we have trig function. So we know that the exponential function prime is the derivative of the exponent times e to the u. And we know uh, the derivative of cosecant, which is negative uh, cotangent cosecant. So uh, those are uh, known derivative. You should know them very well. And here we use the general rule. So let's start with the first question. So e to the x squared tangent x times cosecant 6x prime so first thing I will apply the product rule because the first function second function so the product rule fg prime is f prime g plus fg prime so here I will have uh, e to the x square tangent x prime times cosecant 6x plus e to the x square tangent x times cosecant 6x prime so I'm gonna apply the exponent rule for dif different derivative so this is gonna be x square tangent x prime times e to the x square tangent x times cosecant 6x plus e to the x square tangent x times derivative of cosecant this is a general rule so it's going to be 6x prime and derivative of cosecant is negative cotangent cosecant so it's going to be negative cotangent 6x cosecant 6x now this is product rule so this will be 2x tangent x tangent x plus derivative of tangent is secant square so it's going to be x square secant square x times e x square tangent x cosecant 6x plus e x square tangent x derivative of 6x is just 6 times minus cotangent of 6x cosecant of 6x now you see here 
it's a comment factor this is comment factor because I have it here and here and I have this one and this one here so this is a product so that's me I can pull out this out so I can take this as a comment factor just to make my expression look simple you can stop here because you're done there's nothing to do here I just take this as a comment factor to make my expression look simple so this we left is 2x tangent x plus x squared secant squared x and when I take off this and I take off this what's left is minus 6 cotangent 6x and this will be your final answer you can keep it in this form this is still correct but if you want to simplify it make it look like very simple you can take the common factor out alright for the second one for the second one we have fraction so we're going to use caution rule so f over g prime is f prime g minus f g prime over g square so I'm going to apply this idea so it's going to be sine 6x prime times x square plus x plus 5 minus sine 6x times x square plus x plus 5 prime the whole thing over x square plus x plus 5 square so this is a chain rule so we know that sine prime sine of u prime is u prime cosine u so this is what I do here so this is going to be derivative of 6x which is 6 so it's going to be 6 cosine 6x times x squared plus x plus 5 minus sine 6x times derivative of x squared plus x plus 5 is 2x plus 1 and the whole thing over the denominator and you're done for number C I will deal with it as exponent so the square root of x over x plus 1 prime I will change it to x over x plus 1 to the half prime because I know that if I have exponent it's more easier so uh, uh, for the exponent so what we have if I have u or f to the n prime is n f prime times f n minus 1 you see it's more simpler than deal with the radical so here is going to be half x over x plus 1 prime times x over x plus 1 half minus 1 so here this is caution rule we're going to be half the caution rule we just did one example so it's going to be x prime times x plus 1 so it's going to be x plus 1 minus x over x plus 1 square because x plus 1 prime is just 1 times x over x plus 1 to the minus half and here x simplify so here will be 1 over 2 times 1 over x plus 1 square if this is negative we just flip the fraction to make it positive so it's going to be x plus 1 over x to the half and it should be like this 1 over 2 times x plus 1 square square root of x plus 1 over x and this will be your final 
answer. So for uh, last question, so let me see if I can do it in this spot because the last question is very simple. So here my D, this will be a prior group exponential. So e to the minus x times 4x plus 100 or 1000 prime is a prior group. So it's going to be e to the minus x prime times 4x plus 1000 plus e to the minus x times 4x plus 1000 prime. e to the minus x is minus e to the minus x times 4x plus 1000 and here will be just 4 because derivative of 4x plus 1000 is just 4 so it's going to be plus 4e to the minus x so if you distribute you distribute the minus e to the minus x you can have minus e minus 4x e to the minus x minus 1000 e to the minus x and you end up having at the end uh, if you simplify you will end up having uh, minus 4x e to the minus x minus uh, 996 e to the minus x because I will have 1000 minus 4 is, 900, is 996 so this will be your your answer sorry for this but you can stop here so it will be uh, enough so next question, find uh, an equation of the tangent line of the curve f of x, x squared minus 8 at the point where the curve crosses the x-axis. So when the curve crosses the x-axis, we know that f of that value is 0. So we already know that f of that value is 0, which means I need to find out which value make uh, f of x cross uh, the x-axis, so in that case I need to make f of x equal 0 to find out the x-intercept. So I will have x cubed minus 8 equals 0, which means that x cubed equal 8 and x equal 2. So f of 2 equals 0. Now I need to find out the equation of the tangent line at x equal 2, because they want uh, the tangent line at the value where the curve crosses the x-axis, which means at x equal 2. So uh, here I know that the equation of the tangent line is y equal f prime of a times x minus a plus f of a. So this is the equation of the tangent line. So if you don't remember how to get the equation of the tangent line, just remember uh, how to find out the slope so when we have two points so we have the slope is what m equal uh, y w y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 so this y1 is the function so it's going to be f of x minus uh, f of x1 minus f of x2 over x1 minus x2 and this form if I use like mm, the limit so it's going to be the derivative. So you see, this is just the derivative. And we know that the equation of the tangent line is the same thing as the equation of the line. So y equal mx plus b. Or if I use the point, uh, the point slope form, so it's going to be y equal the slope times x minus a plus f of a. So this is the point slope and this is what we use to find out the equation of the tangent line. And m is my derivative. So uh, let me take off this off. Okay. So now I need to find out the derivative of f of x. So we know that f of x is x cubed minus 8, so f prime of x is 3x squared, so I need to find out the value of the derivative at 2, so f prime of 2 will be 3 times 4, 
which is 12 so now I'm done so I got my function will be y equal 12 times x minus 2 and we know that f of 2 is 0 because it closed the x-axis so I don't need to worry about this distribute and you got your tangent line alright the part of this problem are related so use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of f of x equal x minus 1 over x so I use the derivative so the definition is limit f of x plus h minus f of x over h when h go to 0 so I'm going to use this definition so for a f prime will be the limit of x plus h minus 1 over x plus h minus x minus 1 over x the whole thing over h when h go to 0 here I make common derivative on the numerator and multiply by 1 over h because we divide uh, here when I make common derivative we'll have one fraction so it's going to be one fraction over another fraction because h is h over 1 so I just need to multiply by the reciprocal so I will have x times x plus h minus 1 minus x minus 1 times x plus h over x times x plus h and I multiply by the reciprocal of h over 1 which is 1 over h now here I just distribute here I distribute or foil so here I will end up having x squared plus x h minus x here I will have minus times x squared plus x h minus x minus h the whole thing over x times x plus h times h so here I just a bit the minus so I got x so I forgot to, to add the limit here and to do the limit when h go to 0 limit when h go to 0 same thing here limit when h go to 0 so here I will have x square plus x h minus x this will be the minus over x times x plus h times h so here cancel what's left is h over this product so I cancel the h here will be 1 so I will have the limit of 1 over x times x plus h when h go to 0 so it's going to be just 1 over x times x which is 1 over x squared so this will be the derivative of this function so now they ask me to find out the equation of the tangent line like I say again the equation of the tangent line y equal f prime of a times x minus a plus f of a so uh, they want the tangent line at point x equal at the value at the point where x equal 2 so a is 2 here so this mean y will be f prime of 2 times x minus 2 plus f of 2 so they already give me the derivative so I just need to substitute derivative here so it's going to be 1 fourth x minus 2 and I need to find out what is f of 2 just need to plug in 2 into the equation so f of 2 will be 2 minus 1 over 2 which is half so this will be 1 fourth x minus 1 half plus half so this cancel out so y will be 1 fourth x and this will be your tangent line equation alright next question so here they ask me to find out y prime so uh, t 
dy over dx is just y prime so I just need to take the derivative from the side and uh, combine left terms and get the y prime one side and the rest on the other side so this is what I do here I'm looking for y prime so I'm going to take the derivative of both sides so uh, here will be x prime which is just 1 plus 2 y prime y because this derivative dy is a function so it doesn't disappear because the variable here is x if the variable here is y so the y will disappear and the x stays but here the variable is x so x prime will be 1 so keep in mind that dx over dx is just 1 this is why we say the derivative of x is 1 so always when they ask when they give you this type of question look at what's your variable here because sometimes they give you this question and people think it's dy over dx so be careful which one on the, on the denominator the denominator disappeared because it's the variable but the denominator stays so that's mean here in that case x prime stays and y prime will become 1 alright just to let you know alright here I take the derivative this is the chain rule for cosine so we know the derivative of cosine is negative sine so as just to remind you so uh, this is sine this is cosine alright this is sine cosine negative sine negative cosine so the derivative of sine is cosine the derivative of cosine is negative sine the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine the derivative of negative cosine is sine this is the derivative for anti-derivative do the reverse opposite or the opposite sign, opposite direction. So, all the integral, you see, anti derivative of cosine is sine, anti derivative of sine is negative cosine, and so on. So, this is the integral. Alright, so here we have a chain rule. So, we'll have xy prime times derivative of cosine is negative sine. So, it's going to be times, so I put the minus here sine of x y so here is the park rule so it's going to be 1 plus 2 y prime y here is going to be minus times y plus x y prime sine x y I distribute the minus and the sine on both sides on this expression 1 plus 2 y prime y is minus y sine x y minus x y prime sine x y so I combine the terms that has y prime so I'm gonna move these terms here I move the minus on the other side so here when I move this so it's become positive on that side so it's become x y prime sine x y plus 2 y prime y and here will be minus y sine x y minus 1 now because I'm looking for y prime I take y prime as cap factor so minus y sine x y minus 1 now because we have the uh, factor next to y prime so we divide both sides by that factor so x sine x y plus 2y and this will be my answer Alright, next question. So let a be a constant and define the function h of x is x u plus x minus 1 plus a x times x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. Show that h has a root on the interval 0, 1. So here I'm going to use the intermediate value theorem. We said if the function is continuous, you see, we have to be careful the con the, the hypothesis or the condition the function must be first continuous this is a polynomial function because a is just a constant that means this is a polynomial function so the function is continuous everywhere on the interval 0 1 
Now I'm going to check what's the value of the function at 0 and what the value of the function at 1. So h is continuous. On 0, 1, because h is a polynomial function. h is polynomial. So now I need to find out what the value of h of 0. So when I substitute 0 here, I get 0 here, minus 1. The whole thing is 0 because we have 0 here, so it's going to be minus 1. h of 1. So here will be 0, so it's going to be 1, because we have 1 minus 1 is 0, what's left is 1. So as you see here, h of 0 is minus, and h of 1 is negative, uh, is, is positive. So if I do it in my coordinate plane, h of 0 will be here, h of 1 will be here, and this is continuous function. So if I draw, like for example, a line, you see it must cross the x-axis, that means there is a root, that means there is a value in the interval 0, 1, such that make this function equal 0. That means there exists here by the intermediate value theorem. So, so there is C between 0 and 1, such that I will have H of C will be equal 0. That means there exists a root which is going to be between 0 and 1. Now, by calculating h of 1 third and h of 2 third, show that for a sufficiently large, h has at least 3 roots. Alright, so what do you mean by 3 roots? So if I do my number line here, how can I have 3 roots on 0, 1? So this is 0, this is 1, this is 1 third this is 2 third. So we know that at 0 is negative and 1 is positive because it's 1. So in order for me to have 3 root, yes, I need to have the graph should pass here, here and here. Now in order for me to gra the graph to pass here, I need to have h or uh, the value of one third should be positive because it go from negative to positive in order for to cro to cross uh, the x-axis. So it should change the sign from negative to positive. So if this is negative, this one should be positive, and from positive should be negative, and this from negative to positive is going to cross again. You see, this is how you should think about it. Now, I need to have h of one one third should be greater than zero. So this is exactly what I'm going to look for. h of 1 third should be greater than 0 because it's positive. So what I do, I'm going to make h 1 third greater than 0. So in that case, I will get the value for a. So I substitute 1 third here. So I got 1 over 27 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 plus a times 1 third and uh, 1 third minus 1 is minus 2 third and 2 third minus 1 is minus 1 third this should be greater than 0 now here make common denominator so the common denominator is 27 so I will have here I multiply both sides by 27 so here we have 1 plus 9 minus 27 plus 27 here, so it's going to be just 2a because 3 times 3 times 2 is 27, so it cancels out b2a, so greater than 0 because 0 times 27 is 0. Now, here I will have uh, 10, so it's going to be minus 17 plus 2a is greater than 0, so 2a should be greater than 17. If I add 17 both sides, then divide by 2, so a must be greater than 17 over 2. So if I pick a greater than 17 over 2, so the value here will be positive, that means it's going to cross here. Now, let me see what's the value for a for h to third. So I do the same idea, I'm going to see, I need, you see it should be negative. So I have to have h of two third less than zero. So I do the same process, I plug in 
this and then make it less than zero and solve for the inequality so here I will have 8 so let me do it here so it's going to be 8 over 27 plus 2 third minus 1 plus a times 2 third and uh, 2 third minus 1 is minus 1 third and 4 third minus 1 is 1 third this should be less than 0 so I multiply the whole thing by 27 the same idea so here we have 8 plus 18 minus 27 plus and here 27 will cancel out so it's going to be a minus 2a so here will be minus 2a it's less than 0 so here is 26 so it's going to be minus 1 minus 2a is less than 0 so add 1 both sides then divide by negative 2 so add 1 so minus 2a is less than 1 divided by negative 2 so this means a will be greater than minus half so here in order for me to have this negative a should be greater than negative half so I need to have the greatest value that means of course 17 over 2 is greater than negative half so if I pick a greater than 17 over 2 so I will have at least 3 uh, root between 0 and 1 so for a so let me write it down on the top here so for a greater than uh, 17 over 2 so h has at least 3 root in the interval 0 1 alright so last question for today so here they, they ask me to find out the absolute max and absolute mean so keep in mind the derivative give you always the local max and the local mean but when they give you a closed interval so you need to check the end boundary of the interval to find out which one is the absolute which one is the uh, local so here always what we do first take the derivative f prime so here we'll have e to x e to the x plus 7 prime which is this is a park rule so it's going to be x prime which is 1 so e to the x plus x e to the x plus 7 which is 0 so this will be my answer now here we have e to the x as common factor so it's going to be 1 plus x now I'm going to see the sign here we know that e to the x is always positive so it's not going to affect the sign at all so the, the only expression affect the sign is 1 plus x so I'm going to see the sign of 1 plus x so here I'm going to do my number line I know that 1 plus x equals 0 at minus 1 so this is going to be minus 2 minus 1 and this is 0 so uh, 1 plus x is negative on the left side and positive on the right side so just plug in a number here minus half minus 1.5 so it's going to be negative uh, because this is always positive e to the x is always positive so here this is the sign of the derivative which means the function will be decrease and increase if it's decreased that means this will be your local mean and because it's the smallest of both and point of the interval so it's going to be your absolute mean so absolute mean is at x equal minus 1 so to find out f of minus 1 I just need to plug in minus 1 here so it's going to be minus e to the minus 1 plus 7 
so then which one is the absolute max what I need to do I need to plug in those two and point into the function so I'm gonna find what is f of 0 which is gonna be 0 times e to 0 plus 7 which is just 7 and f of minus 2 which is gonna be minus 2 e to the minus 2 plus 7 and of course because here we subtract this value from 7 so it's gonna be less than 7 so this you will be your absolute max so absolute max is at x equal 0 where f of 0 will be 7 so uh, I hope you got the idea about this first video so see you inshallah for the second video and the third to complete that first set of review and thank you for watching the video and salam alaikum please any comment, it would be very welcome. Thank you very much.